Okay, so day two on this critical role project. And today is kind of sucked because the second round, the last round really, of tickets to get autographs for these guys was this morning at 10. And they went in seconds. Like, apparently, there's people who make macro bots of being able to just buy them out and using multiple emails and stuff. And so people who are trying to get them legitimately really don't have a chance. And that was my last chance of getting this signed that I'm aware of. So frustrated today, having one of those days. So how do I deal with my level of frustration? I'm going to draw because I have to look at it as even though I probably won't be able to succeed in the goal of getting them to see it and sign it and all of that, um, I still have to do it. I still have to get the work done. Because starting it and then giving up doesn't feel good. So going back in, I'm going to work on Talison today and his characters. He has quite a few. And I'm trying to get them all in here. Um, if I can get that done today, we'll sort of see how it goes. But I'm going to start with his face because getting that right is primary. Drop the music level way down and brought my voice level up. There are definitely times where it's hard to tell what I'm saying because I don't modulate the way my voice sounds while I'm drawing particularly much. So I may just leave the music to do this thing. Plus, I'm having a frustration day and it's probably best for me to keep my mouth shut while I'm like that. basically have a monopoly on getting celebrity autographs and stuff like that at conventions in this area, particularly Rose City Comic Con and a lot of the like Emerald City type things. Uh, Epic Photo Ops works with all of them and has all of the contacts so they get to decide how things are run and their website is set up in such a way that if you have something in your shopping cart, that doesn't mean you've got it. Like other people can still buy that item that you have in your shopping cart. So I managed to get Matt's autograph for Saturday in my shopping cart as soon as it went on sale, like literally like less than a second as I was refreshing it, refreshing it, and it, I got it in there, and I had my uh, credit card information in the copy-paste buffer, so I just pasted it all into place and hit go, and it was like, oh, it's too late, that's already sold out, which made me wonder if they were pretending to offer uh, more autographs today and not really having them. Not really selling tickets, just 
getting people to come to the site to try and sell other other autographs. It's critical role is just the idea that there might be something available gets you back on the site and you just take what you can get from somebody else. Rose City Comic Con insists that's not the case. I bought it up kind of publicly. And uh, I'm like, oh no, no. There were some, they're just gone. And people are posting as if they got them. But I gotta think, the people that are posting that they got them, that's not how they cheated to get them. I don't know how they did it. But I had that transaction done. I would say within eight seconds of it becoming available and it wouldn't go through. So, I mean, there couldn't have been many for sure. And, yeah, people have limited amount of time, so I understand they can't get to everybody, just leaving me frustrated today. fresh after it's I couldn't get a thing to go through and things never did pop back up again but yeah, I do think that there were some like plugging in tickets for people individually instead of releasing them all at once at 10 like they said they were going to and uh, so t if Talison's got released it was while I was fighting to get Matt's by the time I went to get his, because it looked like maybe there had been some available. Uh, the only day that was available was Sat was Sunday, and we can't go on Sunday, unfortunately. So, I guess that's pretty much our problem. <laughs> we maybe should have planned to do a full weekend at this, but no idea it was going to be such a shark-infested situation just to get an autograph on a, a drawing. And some people on Facebook recommended that I just slip it to them around the side of the table or something. But it's a pretty good way to get thrown out of the show. celebrity drawings that I do and I've done a lot of them and I've had people ask me if I'm going to make prints of these I do make prints of them but I don't sell them I give them to the celebrities to do with what they want because it's not my face to sell you know, it's one thing if I've completely invented a character or if I'm doing an illustration for a game or a book or something but it's understood that I have the rights to sell the prints afterwards. That's cool. But it's not cool for me to, or anybody really, and it has nothing to do with just me. It is just not a cool thing to do to 
do a picture of someone that, that hell, they don't necessarily even know exists and start selling it. That seems exploitative. And I know some people who do that. Um, and I actually like some people who do that. I don't like that they do it. As a person, they seem pretty cool, and they have justified their exploitation of famous people's images in one way or another, like, oh, well, you know, it's it's an original drawing, so, or it's, uh, they're in the public, so you have a right to them. Eh, I don't know. It just feels... It's got all the bad feels. So I really try not to do things like that. Um, you know, people want prints. And then, you know, I really can't be just printing them and giving them away for free to everyone who wants one. So unfortunately, it just is just a thing that doesn't happen unless one of these people gives me permission. But generally... It's, it's amazing if one of these people gives me the time of day. Permission isn't likely, you know? Um, like, I've done some drawings for Felicia Day, and they were of her characters in the guild. Her character in the guild is her. So do I do prints of that? No, I gave them to Felicia, and she could do what she wants with them, and then I never heard back. She, like, would recognize me at Dragon Con and at other conventions we went to, and I know she knew who I was when Jocelyn, my daughter, talked to her at one show that she saw her at. So they actually, you know, she, she remembers, but she doesn't imagine have any need to reach out contact artists who have done things for her because she has a list of people who want to. And I really get on the lists. I guess that's been my problem most of my careers. I have no idea how to get on these lists. Um, there are things, projects, properties that I love, love, love for. Things that have been influential in my life. Star Wars, you know, it's been a huge influence since I was nine years old and saw it in the movie theater. Um, many, many times, 33 times that summer. The movie theater was basically my babysitter for a summer. Um, I would love to get involved with something like that. And I know people who know people, but those doors don't open. And I don't know how they do for some folks and not others, other than incredible talent, obviously. That's got to be one of the things that is is the qualifier. Um, like, I've met Ryan Mannerding from Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe. He is the head of lead development of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And we met at a show like five, six years ago now. It's been a long time. And we helped him out with some stuff, and we got to talking about things, and I told him I was interested in, you know, maybe doing some freelance work for them, or something like that, showed him a bunch of samples, gave him some stuff to take home. Never heard. So, I imagine that's the kind of thing that happens at a lot of shows. I try to go above and beyond and give people things, samples for free, and stuff like that. A lot of folks ask me for advice on how to get your foot in the door, things like that. And boy, I wish I had some advice to give folks because I may have actually succeeded at it. And as of yet, it has not been the case. The only thing I can really say is we keep plugging away.
people who are better than you, who are trying to do the same thing you're trying to do. And you think to yourself, oh, but I'm really, I have my skills all exactly, you know, to the level that I think would be good for them and it seems to be the stuff that they want to see and, and all of that. Uh, the one thing that I can say is you never show them what they've already got. If they have a person doing the kind of work that you do, well, why would they not continue to use the person they started with? Um, you always want to be something at least a little bit different, but at, and this is the hard part, at the same quality level, but different. And that can be really tough to judge. Like, how do you know if you're at the same quality level? And I really have come to realize that there's two kinds of artists that make it and have it work. And one is the artist that just has some sort of amazing natural ability to do a style that connects with people in a way that, for some reason, works. Uh, there's no predicting it. It just sort of happens when it happens. And, you know, great. It's great to be that person, to be able to have your personal style be the thing that hits just right in the, uh, the public view. But the other kind of person is the artist who is able to recognize good and bad quality in all styles and adapt their work in a style that no one has seen before, but they know is still good quality. Does that make sense? Like, like you have to become a very good judge of yourself, and that's not always an easy thing to do. Um, when you know you've done something good, it's really easy for your imposter syndrome to get in there and say, um, is it really all that good? Maybe it sucks. Maybe we just don't know that it sucks. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's not as great as we think and other people probably won't like it and so maybe you don't even try. Um, there are people who are great judges and that's great. People who are really tapped into the public awareness and knowing stuff like that that's really a bane to most artists I know. Just I can't handle the idea of marketing them, so. um, yeah, I lost my train of thought because this is part of having a little bit of difficulty with this area. able to talk. So, oops, I'm not really sure where I was going with that. I felt like it was something important too, which is unfortunate. Um, but yeah, knowing, knowing what you do is good or just believing in what you're doing is good can make all the difference. And you just keep trying and always, always try to get a little better, try to improve. Uh, if you don't know how to tell what you're doing is good, ask people. Say, what do you think of this? And whatever you do, don't ask the people who love you. Don't ask like your close family and things like that. The people who are f afraid to hurt your feelings if they don't like what they see. Um, ask people whose opinions you trust and who you're pretty sure will be honest with you. And sometimes that finds that means like finding an industry professional that is a good judge 
And there are some of those out there. Like, I know for sure uh, Ryan Neanderding is a good judge because he's the art director, basically, for most of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So he is very good at deciding if what he sees is going to work quality-wise. Um, and if it's going to appeal to the public. Um, find a person who you believe them when they tell you something. And it's not that you don't believe your mom and dad or your brother and sister or whatever, or your spouse or significant other. Like, believe them, but also be aware that they are not looking to hurt your feelings. So, like, what they say, gotta take it with a grain of salt, because there's... There's honesty, and then there's bluntness. And you're gonna find, you know, if a person really cares about you, they probably don't want to be blunt with you if they're seeing something that's a problem with, with what you're so working so hard on. Um, I learned not that early on. This was actually one of those things where I was like, oh, I believe what people are telling me. Um, learned medium ways into my career that I couldn't necessarily always believe the people who were close to me when they said they that they thought what I was doing was great because they liked it but they liked it because it was mine and they were impressed with what I did and they couldn't imagine how I did it and stuff like that um, which is all well and good I mean if you're doing something creative there's going to be a lot of people who just cannot imagine how you're doing it that's fine um done a good job at something, um, it's really easy to believe them because they've gotten to the point where they can tell if it's not good. Um, they're just, their skill level is so high at creating believable things or, you know, doing design work that is engaging and fascinating to everyone who looks at it. Um, stuff like that. There's, there, I'm lucky that I have some people who I know, if I have them look at something, they're going to tell me the honest about the truth for sure. Uh, it's important to find that in your life, to find someone who's going to tell you the truth and whose truth is often right. Um, it's hard because a lot of times those people are busy and they, you're, you're going to be like, I don't know, why do they have time for me? Why should I hope they have time for me? And the only ones who really do are the ones who end up becoming your friend. You know? Uh, luckily in this business, friends are really not Critiques happen outside of college, and you know, they have to be in an educational environment, but they kind of have to be honest with you. Most people will not judge. 
just look at your work and immediately tell you the problems. There are some who will, but those people are sometimes looking to cut you down. There, I would say there's like a, a good 5% of the artists that I've met that are cut down artists that, that are just, they get a level of pleasure almost out of making another artist sort of squirm with discomfort. And some of them are very popular and very famous. And you really got to be careful about them because they can be a imposter syndrome booster. They can make you think that you're doing very badly when you're not. Um, I had an experience like that when I was younger, where I showed my work to somebody who I was a big fan of, and I had a chance to meet him, and he saw what I did, and his comments were not at all encouraging. And I don't think he was trying to be mean, I just think he didn't care how I reacted to what he said. Like, it's, it wasn't mean, it was apathetic. And that can be rough, because he, what it turns out was, he didn't dislike what I was doing. He actually, apparently from people who know him better than I do, was told me later since then, that he probably actually was pretty impressed with what I was doing for my age at the time. Um, but he doesn't say nice things to anybody. Just doesn't. And you gotta be careful of those people, because you can't fish for a compliment from someone who enjoys putting other people down. Fishing for compliments is really never a good idea, honestly. Ask for the truth, but if you're asking for it from someone who's enjoying your dis discomfort, your self-doubt, uh, and yeah, I mean, we met in person, I could tell you some names, because you'd probably be surprised at some of the people who I've seen just crush folks. Just crush. And for no good reason. For, for the reason of their own evil gratification. Um, I'm not gonna call anybody out on YouTube, though. I'm gonna have to talk in person, sorry. Um, but yeah, there's just... There's all different folks out there. Find the people you trust. frustrated with not being able to get the autograph tickets and stuff like that. I, like, I didn't know how much they were going to be. We had to kind of save up for them. And when we fir first had them on sale, I was a little like gun shy about buying $400 worth of autograph tickets because uh, sometimes it's just money that isn't there. Um, but I sold that Blue Angels painting and I'm like, I'm going to treat myself. I'm going to get this happening. And I really thought timing was just perfect that they were releasing more at a time where I could actually afford to buy them. It was meant to be, and then it was definitely not meant to be. So. 
so such a bore. Um, such is life. You know, we. A lot of people think that oh, people know who I am, so I must be doing so well and so successful. And all. Right now, I just don't have the temperament to work for somebody like that. And after all of these years of pushing so hard to make an art career for myself, it feels like I'd be giving up. If I took a job at Walmart or something, you know, it'd be like, okay, that was that was the final nail in my hope to be a recognized artist, to do a work on one of these kinds of properties, one of these IPs. Because one thing I've learned pretty well in my career is if all you do is your own personal stuff, you might get lucky and get discovered. But if you work on one of these IPs, your name gets seen. Like, you, you expand your fan base interest 100% by getting linked up to one of these things. And then your personal stuff will do great. Uh, but sometimes you gotta watch out for the contracts because sometimes they end up owning all your personal stuff. Things are not pretty. Um, that's why you gotta be careful when you're working for like, Disney or something. who have already done things, who put thought into why something is laid out the way that it is, and then the software comes in and samples the thought process 100,000 times until it thinks it understands it and can duplicate it. But all you're ever doing is duplicating someone else's good efforts. You're never creating something. The idea that companies like Disney are willing to basically quit creating and start processing is very disturbing to me. But even worse than that is the general public gullibility to, to believe what they're looking at is real. Because it's becoming more and more convincing sells more stuff and starts to build algorithms around these samples that are more accurate. Um, it's going to be harder and harder to find the mistakes. Right now, it's often quite easy to find the errors in the AI generated art. Because they sometimes stick out like a sore thumb. There was, there was the joke of the people who had seven fingers on all their hands, and that's definitely one way you can tell. But there's other ways that are a little less obvious, but definitely a lot more broken. Like, um, there's a picture that's been floating around the internet of an abandoned mansion. And it's seen from the front, and it's got all of these creepy window structures and stuff, and it's... 
um, if an artist had painted it, they probably would have put in a front door. But this so-called abandoned mansion has no entries. And so you can tell when these things are built as plagiarism stuff, the, the lack of thought that goes into them can be really obvious sometimes, really blatant, that, you know, a person would have thought of that, would have thought, make sure there's a front door. Um, the program doesn't, and it requires human intervention to remind it to do things like that. So you have to, I don't know, change your prompts to make sure those kinds of things are added, but the people who are prompting the AI to do these things and are building these prompt systems aren't good enough to tell that the mistakes are happening. So they're not thinking to change their prompt structures to account for the problems being made because they aren't noticing the problems being made because they don't have an eye for this at all. And thus they will not ever really be artists. That's the trick, is artists have an eye for this stuff. And AI prompt programmers often don't. And you can tell. You can really tell. So, you know, things like that make me think it's a fad that's going to go away. Because it's going to be hard to teach it better, to teach it to know. Eek. I'm just noticing problems I'm having here. See, but I'm a human artist and I see the problems I've created. And I can fix them. one more face done. So I'm going to call it here and upload the video of Matt, get this video started processing, and I don't know, maybe eat some ice cream or something. I'm still bummed about not getting autographs. But drawing helps, just doesn't solve the problem. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry if I rambled like crazy. I said I wasn't going to talk as much. I talked more this time, I think. And have a great day. And I'll get on Taliesin's companion pieces, his characters, uh, maybe late tonight or tomorrow. Bye now.